In the last episode of Painting with John Garvin, I talked a little bit about the Badlands, an arid wasteland just a few miles east of Bend, consisting of over 30,000 acres of ancient lava flows and scrubland. What I didn't have time to mention then is that the Badlands are home to one of the most amazing things you can see in Central Oregon, a grove of ancient old growth Western junipers. And when I say old, I'm not kidding. While the trees vary in age, most are at least 250 years old, and some are over a thousand. I mean, think about that. It's possible that around the time this tree was just a seedling, William the Great was born, and the King of England was conquering Norway, and all sorts of other fun historical trivia. The point is, these trees have been here a really long time, and they look like it. The older trees are half dead with tiny twigs of green buried beneath masses of weathered husk, evidence of centuries of blizzards, wind, and lightning storms. They really are some of the most amazing and beautiful trees in the entire world, which is why I want to attempt in my next painting to capture some of this ancient majesty. I'm going to call it Life in the Badlands. So again, I've talked a little bit before about how I start a painting, working with photographs um, that I've taken myself, how I transfer them to the uh, Masonite, and also how I do an underpainting. So I only wanted to talk about this one just a little bit, it's already completely dry, um, is this is actually more like a still life than a landscape, which is why there is so much detail in the drawing and in the underpainting, because I normally work a lot more abstractly at this stage. Um, but because the structure of this ancient juniper is just so interesting, I wanted to make sure that I got the dead branches, the branch where the moss is growing, um, and just the overall shape and texture of, of this image. Um, I wanted to make sure I got it right. So I'm really looking forward to starting this painting, and uh, let's see how it goes. For this painting, I'm using a very simple palette, alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow medium, French ultramarine, and titanium white. I start by mixing white and a touch of blue and begin working over the sky. This is an example of where I probably should have left this white in the underpainting because the gray I used is just too dark. It will take a few coats to make the sky bright enough. Then I add just a touch of red and blue to cad yellow and mix a warm pale color for the background. At this point, my goal is to get all the light colors laid in first. I realize that I'm going to need some grays in the palette as well. So I add Portland gray medium to mix the darker areas of the ground, the detail in the trees, and the distant background shrubs. One of the things I love about working with this limited palette is it allows you to mix a really rich brown, just using red with a bit of blue and yellow. Here, I'm working with thin washes that allows the well-defined structure in the underpainting to show through. These are only the first layers of paint that I'm going to need to capture this ancient tree's rough bark and texture. I add a little Payne's Gray to the palette so I can get these really dark shadow areas to pop out. I really want the tree to stand out against this busy background. Then I start working out detail using a whole range of lighter reds, browns, and oranges. Now that I have some darker, richer colors laid in, I go back to the ground and begin to define these clumps of sage. It's at this point that I'm beginning to realize that I might have a problem, that this is going to be trickier than I thought, trying to get these background shrubs to have enough detail to be convincing without competing with the juniper. Next, I decide to tackle the lichen that's made its home along these dead branches. This is the painting's focal point and where it gets its title, Life in the Badlands. I use cat yellow with just a hint of blue and red to get this rich yellow green and go in lightly, not wanting to cover up the heavy impasto texture that I had built up in the underpainting. Making the lichen look convincing will take a lot more work, but it's far enough along at this point that I'm pretty sure I can pull it off. Then I begin adding detail, refining branches in the canopy, twigs and stems in the lower areas, shadows and details to the larger branches, and more detail to the clumps of needles in the background. Again, this was going to prove to be a challenge. Here, I'm adding in too many dark masses of color, blotting out too much of the sky. I'm gonna have to come in later and open this all back up again. Then I start working on the foreground details, like these large clumps of needles on the left. 
And here, unfortunately, is where the painting begins to go south in a hurry. I really liked how these simple brushstrokes suggested needles with very little work, so I started adding them everywhere along the bottom, hoping I could use them to get away with painting less detail in the sagebrush behind them. The only problem, it would turn out later, is that none of this was in my photo reference or the underpainting. But I'll come back to this. Next, I start adding detail to the ground, just hinting at sticks, straw, and small bits of grass. Then, detail work on the sage, adding shadows, defining masses and dark areas, trying to really get at the structure of these plants. Finally, using a lighter, warmer gray, I add detail to their tops, allowing me to get more separation between them as they recede into the background. So, this is the point where I realized I had a real problem. That whole area between the lichen and the tree trunk had become kind of a mess. The twigs and needles in the foreground were lost among all that background sage, which were all the same value and color. Worse, the whole painting had sort of flattened out. I, I literally stopped and asked, what have I done? Why hadn't I followed the photo reference or the underpainting? At this point, I didn't even know if the painting could be salvaged. So I decided to put my brushes down for the night and I'd come back at it in the morning with fresh eyes. So here's what happened. I got up in the morning so eager to attack this problem that I forgot to turn on my camera and I just started painting. In only half an hour, I had painted out all those tiny needles and twigs and replaced them with more sage. This was such an improvement, creating great separation between the juniper and desert background and adding a real sense of depth and space as we could now see the sagebrush getting smaller and less detailed as they receded to the horizon, which adding just a hint of horizon also helped by giving the whole image a better sense of scale. This change also allowed me to add more color with these warm, soft yellows replacing all those masses of black and gray. Overall, I was happy with these changes, and I could now get to work on finishing the painting. At this stage, it's all about refining and detail work. I start by going in with an even lighter yellow to add more sense of sunlight hitting the desert floor behind the juniper. This also helps define those bits of sage in the distance. Then I add more flowers to the sage, more detail to the lichen, which is starting to feel finished, more detail to the distant branches and needles, and more detail to the foreground, adding some pop to these clumps of needles. And finally, I add my signature. I always try to leave a spot in one of the lower corners free of detail, knowing I'm going to sign it there. And with that, the painting is done. So, how did it turn out? Um, I'll leave that up to you guys. It's not one of my favorite paintings, to be honest. It was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. And getting the perspective correct on those sagebrush going out into the distance behind the tree and trying to really differentiate between uh, the branches in the foreground and all that noisy detail in the background um, with very subtle gradations of color turned out to just be a ton of work. And honestly, I'm not sure how successful it is, but um, I'll do better on the next one. So I could noodle on this again for for weeks and weeks, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to call this one done. So that's it for this episode. If you liked it, think about subscribing, hit that like button, and please do leave a comment. And I'll see you next time.